Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Karalia. Today I wanted to speak to you about uchara practice. It's a word I throw around quite a lot within my socials, etc. And I don't often necessarily explain what I mean by that word. So I thought it was time to do a succinct video on it. Uh, so uchara is a tantric practice and the word itself means raising the om. I learned Uchada practice from Christopher Tompkins in 2010. And so the first thing I'd suggest is that if you would like a more academic and scholarly definition of Uchada, that you look up Christopher Tompkins' work, watch his videos, et cetera, because he is brilliant on that. The perspective that I'm going to give you on Uchada practice is that of a practitioner. So I'm going to speak from my direct experience of what I notice what I experience when I practice and to a degree teach Uchara. So first, a little bit of background on it. Um, I learned the practice in 2010 and was initiated into it by Christopher Tompkins and then practiced every day for about six months and then fairly regularly after that until around 2015. In 2015, I committed to a thousand days of that practice in a row and it took me, I failed twice, um, Drop the ball on day 338, started again. Drop the ball on day 617, started again. And I completed it in July 2021. So I've done thousands of days of this practice. Um, I began teaching it, I think, around 2019. And then in 2020, I began to teach a direct realization training where Uchada practice was the centerpiece of the training. Okay, so there's a little context on my practice and teaching of it. So when I talk about Uchada practice within the context of what I offer as, as a teacher, there's actually like a suite, you could say, of practices, some of which I've learned from Christopher Tom, uh, Tompkins, and these are called preparatory practices. And then there's also a couple of practices that I've ended up adding at the very beginning um, because it just felt right. It felt like the way to orientate. So Uchara, when I speak of it, yes, there is just the Uchara practice itself, which is raising the arm. And then there are preparatory practices that one would do beforehand in order to prepare to raise the arm. And when we talk about preparing to raise the arm, let me just give you an example. So the first practice that we always do as a community and that I do as a practitioner, I do a prayer for pure motive which I learned from Christopher Wallace. And this antidotes the impure or ineffective motives, this three, that people come to the spiritual path with. Um, and so I love, love that prayer, but I'm not going to go into it here. Um, then we move into a Ganesh mantra. And this came about spontaneously as well. And I've since learned that traditionally one would would start with Ganesh Mantra in order to clear the way for the goddess, uh, for prana shakti, for she that is, for aliveness, for energy. And this is a big part of what we're doing with Uchara. And it just feels right to me to go from prayer for pure motive into the Ganesh Mantra. Then we move into spinal rotations, which includes breath retention and is a way of physically warming up the body and also starting to work with prana, prana shakti within the body. From there, we go into C-spine. Uh, so spinal rotations and C-spine, I learned from Christopher Tompkins. And C-spine is a way, again, to, it's you're working on a different plane of movement from spinal rotations. And it's a beautiful way to warm up the whole spine. Um, you can't really warm up the central channel as such, so shumna. But it's like when you work with things on the physical level, you're also impacting them on the mental, emotional and energetic level. So working with C-spine is starting to do that. After that, we move into something. I mean, C-spine, I don't think, is the official name of the practice. Um, when I learned these from Christopher Tompkins, I, I just don't recall what he used as the official name. Then we move into a practice that we affectionately just call hissing or sighing breath. And again, this is a preparatory practice which focuses and moves from the base of the heart all the way up to the Dvada Shanta, which is a point 12 finger widths above the crown of the head. 
And this is very much about clearing the central channel and starting to establish a perceptual connection, right? And when I say perceptual connection, we're working with our own attention and perception. So perceiving the base of the heart, tuning into the central channel all the way through the crown and, and being able to perceive what exists between the crown and the Devada Shanta and being able to perceive that point. And that point, right, the Devada Shanta, uh, is where the universal consciousness, known as, as Shiva, begins to enter, come down and connect with individual consciousness, which is the unique vantage point that Shiva is taking through the human, right, through that which you are. So that particular aspect is really starting to connect those aspects. And then we roll into Uchara practice proper. And so we've done all our preparation. Um, now, Uchara itself has many, many variations. Like I said, it means raising the Om. Um, so in general, it's, it's around using mantra, using sound, and raising that up through the central channel. And there might be breath patterns or retentions in there. There might be different mudras that one uses or different arm movements um, that unfold and different sounds, right? Different traditions, different, so different lineages within the traditions would use different sounds for different chakra points. And there's different chakra maps, right? Recognizing that this is a whole wormhole, but um, there's five chakra systems, for example, there's seven chakra systems, there's 12 chakra systems. And the chakra systems themselves are related to practice. It's all about practice. Chakra is just a focal point for practice. Right? So in the variation that we work with, we're working with the seven chakra system. Okay. There's also visualization, which is really, really important because we're working with the two fundamental principles of the universe according to the tantric traditions. And those two fundamental principles are awareness or consciousness and energy, right? Movement, that which makes the whole manifest reality. Awareness or consciousness is that which contains and permeates all things. And then there's all things themselves, all the phenomena, the phenomena that arise and subside within awareness. So when we're working with this practice, hmm, so we're using sound, right, the mantra. We're using focal points where we chant, like, focus our attention. We're using movement. We're using visualization. And it's easy to just go, oh, there's just this kind of weird, complex practice that we do, you know, just do the thing. But all of these aspects of the practice serve a very specific function when it comes to training perceptual awareness and for me this is what the practice is about in so many ways is that you're expanding perception so you're literally able to perceive more and this is really important like usually so uchara practice you know i would recommend that people already have an embodiment practice before they then come to uchara practice and when I first learned Uchada practice, I had been practicing yoga consistently for 10 years and daily for about four years, like asana practice. And then I moved into Uchada practice. So part of the practice itself is to increase what we perceive, the level of detail. Um, in terms of particularly our inner world so with asana practice often what's happening is we're starting to become more embodied we're starting to be able to feel and perceive our physical body like when I first started asana practice I wasn't even in my body I didn't even know you could feel your legs from the inside right but with uchada practice we're starting to work on the mental emotional realms mental emotional layers of the body and also the energetic layers of the body so by doing the practice, we start to be able to perceive more of a mental, emotional experience and more of our energetic experience. 
And ultimately, what this practice is doing, it's a digestion practice. So through the chanting and through the movement and through the breath retention and through the visualization, through our focus, all of those aspects allow for the digestion of things that are getting stuck in the system, like unresolved emotional experiences from the past, for example, uh, beliefs, thought constructs, ruminating thoughts that go round and round, and then also energetic experiences that inform those, right? So Uchada practice is, it's like, Brushing your teeth, if brushing your teeth is cleaning off the residue from the day so your teeth are nice and clean, Uchada practice is like digesting the mental and emotional residue of each day so that that mental and emotional residue doesn't get stuck in the system, doesn't become samskaras or vikalpas, thought concepts, thought constructs, beliefs. And every day there's a sense of clearness, of clearness, of clearness. Okay, so that's just one aspect. Something else that I've noticed, so when we're working with the visualization, the visualization is a white lotus flower blooming, blossoming in the heart space. And, you know, you might think, oh, yeah, just a pretty thing to focus on. But, but no, it's not just a pretty thing to focus on. There's a felt sense of what that is like when the heart space itself begins to open and flower and bloom like a white lotus flower right and a part of the visualization includes the cool blue or white light of shiva consciousness cascading down from the divada shanta cascading down through the crown cascading down the central channel right and meeting the lotus so if you imagine the lotus flower is opening and the cool white blue light of Shiva is penetrating in some ways, right? And what this is, is like it's opening up to all that is. It's opening up to divine consciousness. It's opening up and surrendering to the effortless flow of life through the being. So many layers. There's so much that goes on for me when I'm really orientating to and feeling that. You know, remembering I've done this thousands and thousands and thousands and maybe thousands of times. Maybe I'm over-exaggerating now. How many thousands? Anyway, point is many times. <laughs> and yeah, many times, because sometimes I'm sitting in practice, we will do, I'll do that like 10, 20, 30, 40 times in one practice. So if I've done it a thousand days and done it 10 times each time, that's 10,000 times. All right, I just want to be accurate. I want to be truthful. I don't want to go into hyperbole. Um but there's this real potent felt sense because remember, you know, we're on the spiritual path and we have this idea of ourselves as a separate individual, which is not actually fundamentally true, right? It's a perception that is false. And a big part of the path is starting to dissolve that perception and to have a direct experience of oneself as not separate from anything there is a sense of continuity with all things and so this practice of uchada for me it starts to feel like that's what it's doing it's giving a direct experience of what it feels like to be one with all whilst also being a particular expression of the all right the unique vantage point um okay I think that's a little bit like this. I feel like there's so much I could say about the charter practice and about the benefits of working with it every single day. It will radically change your life. It will change your perception of reality. It will change your perception of who you think you are. It will allow you to begin to digest the enormous storehouse of old shit that you're carrying around with you. It will support you to digest the daily stuff that arises. It'll bring you into a space of so much more clarity. There'll be a profound sense, or there can be, I've heard this from some students, there's a profound sense of what really matters and what doesn't, and the ability to just let the day-to-day -day burn up. Um, as I said, if you want a more academic, scholarly, you know, that yeah, that kind of information, go see Christopher Tompkins. He's amazing. 
Um, what I recall from some of his teachings is that Uchada practice, or at least the version he taught us, was the daily practice of tantric initiates maybe around the 10th, 11th century. I can't, I can't remember exactly. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to stop talking now. I feel like there's more to say. Uh, on the direct realization trainings that I offer online or in person, Uchada practice is the fundamental key practice that we do as a community. And so if you do want to learn from me, then I highly encourage you to sign up to one of those trainings, whether in person here in New Zealand or online for those of you who might be overseas. Um, I also share it weekly in the direct realization yoga classes that I teach on the toolbox, which is my online platform. And like I said, Christopher Tompkins is another person that you can learn this from. Christopher Wallace, of course, teaches Utada practice with what he does. He's an amazing teacher. Uh, yeah. All right, that's it from me for now. If you have any questions about Utada practice, please feel free to put them down below or reach out and talk to me and I might answer them down below. Or I might make a video depending on the question. Yeah.